World War II, a conflict etched in history for its devastating battles and political turmoil, was a time of immense struggle and sacrifice. The war's impact was felt not only on the front lines but also in the daily lives of civilians across the globe. Often overshadows a less glamorous yet equally crucial aspect, food. The story of food during this period is one of ingenuity, resilience and adaptation. While soldiers clashed on distant battlefields, a silent war raged on the home front, the battle for sustenance. Families had to navigate the challenges of rationing, shortages, and the constant threat of hunger. This essay delves into the often overlooked narrative of food during World War II, separating fact from fiction and highlighting the surprising realities faced by millions. From the ration books that dictated daily meals to the victory gardens that sprouted in backyards, every aspect of food was meticulously managed. We'll debunk common myths surrounding wartime food, particularly those related to rationing and scarcity. Many believe that rationing meant constant deprivation, but the reality was more nuanced. Governments implemented rationing systems to ensure fair distribution and to prevent hoarding. Myths, like stubborn weeds, can obscure the true story. For instance, the idea that people were always hungry is not entirely accurate. Creative recipes and community efforts helped many families make the most of their limited supplies. By unearthing the realities of food production, distribution and consumption during this tumultuous period, we gain a more nuanced understanding of the war's impact on ordinary lives. The war effort required a massive shift in agricultural practices, with many countries increasing their focus on self-sufficiency. Prepare to be surprised because the truth about food in World War II is far more complex and fascinating than many realize. The ingenuity displayed in creating nutritious meals from limited ingredients is a testament to human resilience. Join me as we embark on a journey through history's kitchen, uncovering the untold stories of sustenance and survival during humanity's darkest hour. We'll explore how different countries adapted to the challenges, the role of women in maintaining food supplies and the cultural shifts that emerged from this period of hardship. Victory Gardens became a symbol of hope and self-reliance, with communities coming together to grow their own food. These gardens not only supplemented rations but also boosted morale and fostered a sense of unity. The war also spurred culinary creativity, with cooks and homemakers devising new recipes to make the most of what was available. From powdered eggs to canned meats, the innovations of this era laid the groundwork for modern convenience foods. Food preservation techniques, such as canning and drying, became essential skills. These methods ensured that surplus produce could be stored for the leaner months, reducing waste and extending the availability of essential nutrients. International food aid also played a crucial role with countries like the United States sending supplies to allies and occupied territories. This global effort highlighted the interconnectedness of nations and the importance of cooperation in times of crisis. The legacy of food in World War II is still felt today, the lessons learned about resourcefulness, community support, and the importance of equitable food distribution continue to influence our approach to food security and crisis management. As we reflect on these stories, we honor the resilience and ingenuity of those who lived through this challenging time. Their experiences remind us of the power of human spirit and the vital role that food plays in our survival and well-being. So let's step back into history's kitchen and uncover the rich culinary heritage that emerged from World War II. It's a journey that reveals not just the struggle for sustenance, but also the triumph of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Food, the very essence of life, took center stage during World War II. It fueled soldiers on the front lines and sustained civilians weathering the storm back home. Every crumb, every drop of milk, mattered. Imagine waking up each morning, not to the gentle aroma of coffee, but to the harsh reality of limited resources. Families huddled around kitchen tables carefully dividing meager rations, stretching every ounce of flour and sugar. Empty stomachs grumbled, a constant reminder of the ongoing struggle. Children, their faces etched with a maturity beyond their years, learned to savor the smallest treats, like a single square of chocolate or a handful of berries foraged from the wild. Food wasn't just about sustenance, it was about resilience, resourcefulness, and the unwavering human spirit in the face of adversity. One of the most pervasive myths surrounding World War II food is the notion of widespread starvation due to rationing. This idea has been ingrained in popular culture, often depicted in movies, books, and documentaries. 
However, the reality of rationing during the war was far more nuanced and complex. While rationing undoubtedly brought about significant changes in diets and eating habits, it was not synonymous with starvation. People had to adapt to new ways of cooking and eating, often becoming more resourceful and creative with the limited ingredients available. Families learned to make the most out of what they had, leading to a culture of ingenuity in the kitchen. Rationing, a system designed to ensure equitable distribution of essential goods, was implemented in various countries during the war. This system was meticulously planned and executed to prevent hoarding and ensure that everyone, regardless of their social status, had access to basic necessities. It was a collective effort to support the war front and maintain stability on the home front. Contrary to popular belief, it was not a sign of complete depletion. The rationing system was a proactive measure to manage resources efficiently and avoid the chaos that could arise from unregulated consumption. It was about fairness and ensuring that everyone got their fair share, even if it meant making sacrifices. Governments, recognizing the importance of maintaining morale and productivity, carefully calculated rations to provide a basic level of nutrition. Nutritionists and scientists were involved in determining the minimum dietary requirements to keep the population healthy and capable of contributing to the war effort. This scientific approach ensured that, despite the shortages, people received the nutrients they needed to stay strong. Yes, there were shortages and yes, people had to make do with less. Luxuries became rare and certain foods were hard to come by. But this scarcity also fostered a sense of community and solidarity. People shared recipes, grew their own vegetables in victory gardens, and found joy in simple home-cooked meals. However, starvation, while a tragic reality in specific regions heavily impacted by the war, was not the widespread phenomenon often portrayed. In many places, the rationing system worked effectively to prevent mass hunger. The real challenge was in the logistics of distribution and ensuring that remote or war-torn areas received their share. The myth of mass starvation, often perpetuated by dramatic wartime propaganda, needs to be debunked to paint a more accurate picture of life on the home front. Understanding the true nature of rationing helps us appreciate the resilience and resourcefulness of those who lived through it. It also highlights the importance of community and cooperation in times of crisis, lessons that remain relevant today. Food, beyond its nutritional value, became a powerful tool of wartime propaganda. Governments, eager to maintain morale and garner support for the war effort, carefully crafted narratives around food. Posters extolling the virtues of victory gardens and radio jingles promoting meatless Mondays became commonplace. These campaigns, while promoting resource conservation, also subtly shaped public perception of food availability and consumption. Images of smiling families cheerfully tending their gardens or creatively stretching their rations painted a picture of resilience and national unity. While these messages undoubtedly played a role in boosting morale, they also contributed to the perpetuation of certain myths about wartime food. The reality, as always, was far more nuanced, with experiences varying significantly based on geographical location, socioeconomic status, and individual circumstances. The image of families diligently tending their victory gardens, with smiles on their faces and dirt under their nails, is more than just a nostalgic snapshot of the past. These gardens were a lifeline during World War II, a beacon of hope and resilience in a time of uncertainty. Families grew their own fruits and vegetables to supplement their rations, transforming their backyards into mini farms. This act of growing food was not just about sustenance, it was a statement of self-reliance and determination. The impact of these gardens extended far beyond simply supplementing diets. Victory gardens, also known as war gardens or food gardens for defense, became a symbol of wartime resourcefulness and ingenuity. They were a testament to the human spirit's ability to adapt and thrive even in the most challenging circumstances. These gardens sprouted up in backyards, vacant lots, and even rooftops, turning every available space into a productive plot of land. They represented a tangible manifestation of community spirit, a collective effort to support the war cause and ensure food security. For ordinary citizens, these gardens were a way to contribute to the war effort from their own homes. They fostered a sense of camaraderie and shared purpose as people came together to grow food and support one another. Neighbors shared seeds, tools, and gardening tips, creating a network of support and knowledge. 
This exchange of resources and information empowered individuals to take control of their food supply and become more self-sufficient. Women, in particular, often took charge of these gardens, stepping into leadership roles and demonstrating their capability and resilience. They played a crucial role in providing for their families and communities, ensuring that everyone had access to fresh, nutritious food. These gardens were more than just a source of food. They were a source of pride and empowerment. Women found a sense of purpose and fulfillment in their ability to contribute to the war effort and support their loved ones. The legacy of the Victory Garden movement transcended the war, serving as a testament to the power of collective action and the importance of local food production. It reminded future generations of the strength and resilience of those who came before them and the enduring value of community and self-reliance. Today, the spirit of the Victory Gardens lives on in modern community gardens and urban farming initiatives. These contemporary efforts continue to promote local food production, sustainability and community engagement, echoing the values and lessons of the past. Just as during World War II, people today come together to grow food, share resources, and support one another. These gardens are a reminder that even in challenging times we can find strength and resilience in our communities and in the simple act of growing our own food. Children learn the value of hard work and the joy of harvesting their own produce while families bond over the shared experience of gardening. The lessons of the Victory Gardens continue to inspire and guide us, showing that with determination and cooperation, we can overcome any obstacle. The iconic images of Victory Gardens from World War II serve as a powerful reminder of what can be achieved when people come together with a common purpose. They are more than just pretty pictures. They are a testament to the enduring power of community, resilience, and hope.